Christmas is really over. The Epiphany has been celebrated. The visitation of the three wise men is over. The church readings, the gospel readings, giving us the life and the ministry of Christ, do a bit of a time warp for us. Last week, when we focused on the wise men, on the Magi, Jesus couldn't have been any more than a year or two old. Now today, a week later, we're brought almost 30 years into the future as Jesus, as an adult, is coming to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the Baptist. And this time warp, for us, might cause us to think, hey, maybe nothing important happened between the time Jesus was a little boy to the time he started his public, public ministry. But I don't believe that's the case at all. I'm sure that there were many important things that happened in the life of Christ from that time to the time he was an adult that helped prepare him and the world for how he was going to make a difference. But for reasons that are known to them and important for us, the gospel writers choose to pick up now at this point in the life of Christ as he is an adult being baptized in the Jordan River. And we hear at first that this wasn't something that John was willing to do right off the bat. He, in humility, felt it should have been the other way around. But finally, after some convincing, John the Baptist does the job he's called to do. And as Jesus is being baptized in the Jordan River, the heavens open up, the Holy Spirit descends in the form of a dove, and the voice of God the Father from heaven is heard, saying, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. From that moment forward, the time had come for Jesus' work to change the world and be our Savior would officially and publicly begin. And the voice of God the Father from heaven is a voice of joy declaring that his Son had come to make a difference, to bring about the change that was so important and was so necessary. Comedian Bill Cosby, in one of his older routines, in his unique and powerful way, tells the story about how fathers in particular love to live through their boys, love to rejoice in the accomplishments of their sons. And so he tells the story about this one father and his son who enjoys football. And from the small age, when he's a peewee football player, the father's out there in the front yard trying to toughen up his kid, pushing him over, picking him up, making sure he knows how to play the game, saying, that's my boy, that's right, you get stronger, you get better, you learn how to bounce off my knee and, and grow strong. And so as the son gets older, he gets into high school and he plays high school football. And uh, every time there's a game, the father's there in the stands. He's cheering along. He's saying, that's my boy. That's right. Every tackle, every touchdown, every event. The son goes off to become a college football star. And there dad is in the stand. And one day, the son catch, catches a great interception, runs it back for the winning touchdown. There the father is again in the stand. That's my boy, giving out cigars. That's my boy. Look what he did. And after the game, the cameras are panning on the son and about to give an interview. And what does the son say as he sees the camera? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> Parents love to say that. That's my girl. That's my child. We do it with pride. We do it with joy. We love our children. And oftentimes, that phrase or that announcement comes out of that deep desire to see our kids do better than we did. We want our children to be successful. We want our children to have a good chance. And many of us want our children to make a difference in the world. That's my boy. As God the Father spoke those words at the baptism of Jesus, it was his way of saying, that's my boy. But as opposed to so many of our earthly fathers who make that announcement after every touchdown or every moment of joy and every moment of cheer, God the Father's announcement, this is my son, the beloved, wasn't so much about good things about to happen. See, he was making that announcement because he knew, yes, his son had come into the world to make a difference, but there would be a heavy price to pay for that. It would be a life of sacrifice. It would be a life of pain. It would be a life enduring the struggles of sin and taking them upon his shoulders. And yet God the Father makes that announcement because it's so important that this difference be made in the world. And Jesus' public ministry begins with his baptism because it makes an important connection to us as the people of God. Our relationship with God begins with our baptisms as he calls us by name. He says, 
we are his child who he loves, who he died for, who he rose for. And so as Jesus is beginning this work of salvation, as he's beginning to journey to the cross and to the empty tomb of Easter, he makes that connection to our lives in that same way through the gift of water and the blessings that it brings. It's a reminder to us of what the gift of Christmas was all about. We celebrate that God came down into the manger, into the world to be with us, that God is near. And Jesus begins his life and his ministry with the gift of baptism to make that same connection and to give us that assurance that as we are baptized into the waters of Christ Jesus, we are connected to his life, to his death, and most importantly, his resurrection. A pastor tells the story of a time when he was a missionary to Nigeria and he was teaching in a theological school. And while he was down there in Nigeria and he was teaching in the school, his daughter was born. But the Nigerian government's not quick to grant citizenship just because you're born within their boundaries or within their borders. So the, for the first few days of his daughter's life, she was really a child without an identity and a child without a home, without a citizenship. It wasn't until several days after her birth when her parents could finally get to the United States consulate and fill out the appropriate paperwork that she then was made a citizen and granted a birth certificate with the name and everything else. And a few days into her life, a picture was taken of her as a little brand new baby that went on her brand new United States passport. And for the next 10 years of her life, even though she grew up and didn't look at all like that baby picture anymore, that passport with that picture granted her all sorts of rights and all sorts of privileges. So that a few years later, <laughs> When finally it was time for those missionaries to come home, even though she had never been in the United States, that passport that declared her to be a citizen of the U.S. gave her the right to travel through three continents to get back home, even though she had never been there before. This is why baptism is so important to us as the people of God. It grants us rights and privileges and assurances that can't be found anywhere else in this world. It reminds us that God is with us, that we are His. It's that assurance that we need to hear, the voice of a loving parent announcing to us, that's my boy, that's my girl, you are my child, I love you and I am always with you. And this is so important for us, especially at those times in our lives when things aren't running so smoothly. Those times when we feel alone. Those times when life is such a mess, we don't know how we're going to straighten things out. It's at those moments where the concrete assurance of baptism and that we are connected to Christ's death and resurrection gives us the assurance that God is always with us and God is always near. And that's why for us as a family of faith, we rejoice in, we celebrate, and we support every single person baptized into the name of Christ, and we encourage their life and their development and their continued walk in the ways of the Lord. Have you ever wondered why every year it's called the Nobel Peace Prize? In the 1860s, Alfred Nobel invented dynamite. He invented dynamite to help level mountains and help continue progress in construction of roads and other things that would further develop humanity and mankind. It replaced nitroglycerin, which was very unstable and very dangerous. Yet it did not take long for the army to find a different use for dynamite, to turn what he had intended to be a good thing that would help with progress to turn it into destruction. And Alfred Nobel was so disturbed and troubled by the fact that his invention was being used for destructive purposes that he took all the proceeds that he had made from his new invention and created the Nobel Peace Prize to help further peace and the building up of humanity from that day forward. This is why it's so important for us to be connected together as the family of the body of Christ Jesus through the waters of holy baptism. We live in a world where all too often that which was intended for good is turned into evil. That which was used, should be used to build up is used instead to destroy. We live in a world where leaders are raised up whom we should honor and trust to guide us, where they use that position and they use that authority to coerce and to dare down and to help themselves. 
And that is why it is so important for us. This is the time we cannot delay to continue to do everything in our power to welcome the children of God of all ages from the time of their baptism forward. That's why we rejoice this day in the gift that we have as children and as families. That's why we celebrate today the partnership we have with Lude, that we have the privilege to welcome to our campus children and families who can hear this assurance that they're God's children whom he loves no matter what. That's why during this service today we commit and we pray for our fifth graders and their families as they begin this journey towards receiving the resurrected body and blood of Jesus in their first communion. And that's why, as a family of faith, we welcome children, even though it means at times we have to tolerate momentary intrusions into our time in the house of God. For all of us as God's people, no matter what our age may be, from the little infant to the senior citizen, love to hear and need to hear a parent's voice say, that's my boy. That's my girl. You are my child who I love. Amen. Amen.